Today I'm doing a quick video tutorial for you on my baby shoe card. I posted a, a blog post about this card that I made a little while ago and promised to come back and do a video tutorial for you and only today have I had a chance to sit down and do that and I've actually um, got on my blog the template available for um, the baby shoe card which comes in on in two sheets and you can download that one from my blog um, but I thought I'd just quickly show you how the card goes together it's pretty self-explanatory once you get all the template pieces you'll see what you need to do and I'm going to do something today that I've never done before and I promised myself I'd probably never do but I'm going to actually make a card on the fly as you see it I haven't prepared one um, that I've got in mind what I'm going to make because I've got this little girl's um, card here I've got some writing in the inside because we've already given this one away but I'm going to make you um, a boy version I thought and I've picked out some colours and I'm going to try and make it as um, as we go today so this could be very interesting it could turn all pear shaped and this will be the only card I want to refer to but once you get the template what you need to do is you need to cut yourself out a card base so for the boy version I've chosen this uh, sauce way to make my card base out of You'll get a uh, front panel, what I've called a front panel. I've done, for the boy, I've done this in crumb cake. So for the girls' card, I just did it all in melon mambo. And then you'll also get um, one um, insert that you, this is what you use for your writing panel. Now, if you do your, your shoe in white, you won't need to cut out these um, writing panels. But these are just there if you do, like I've done, coloured cardstock. And you can cut one out and that's enough space to write on or like I've done with both my cards I just cut out two so that there's more room to write I'm not sure if I'll use the second one for this card yet but we'll wait and see now the other pieces that do come in the template are what's called a shoe base <clears throat> this little long thin strip here there's also a um, toe cover what I'm calling a toe cover and it goes that way and last but not least there's an eyelet cover as well so all of these pieces um, I'll show you a shot of all of them, uh, are in the template that you can download. So basically, once you've done that, you can make your shoes however you want. But I just thought I'd quickly show you what it's meant to do. So the shoe um, base ca uh, card just folds straight in half, obviously, to form your card base. Now, it's not tricky, but the only thing that you will notice is that when you get your front panel here, it doesn't line up with this left hand edge here it's designed that you have to just slide it along and you'll notice that the top edges will form this nice round shoe front and your bottom um, edge of your card will sort of flow around like that and if I just flick it over to the back and show you you will have a bit of cardstock sitting out on the back and that's how it's meant to be but that's just kind of so you can um, so the card can open and close but when you put that front panel on there it looks like a nice complete shoe so for this one what I thought I would do is uh, I embossed the, the girl one with the little um, flowers and then I've stuck rhinestones on and I've also embossed the toe. For this boy card I thought I'd use the houndstooth embossing folder on my piece of crumb cake. So and I'm going to leave the rest of the panels just plain. So I'm going to run this through my big shot and I'll be back in one second. Okay so now I've got the front panel embossed and the houndstooth embossing folder. Pretty. Now when I stick these baby cards together, the best way I find is to use Tombow glue uh, because you get a little bit of time to play with it and, and move it into, sp into the right space. Like I said, you need to make sure that you get that edge, that top corner matching up and you need to have the groove of your, sh of your shoe sort of lined up together. So always use Tombow, well I do anyway, just allows you to, because if you stick it down and you get it in the wrong place, you can't move it with any of the others. Now the tip also with this, with this guy here is that you want to put I'll show you here, your eyelet cover and your eyelets in before you stick the front panel on. So to do this, like I said, Tombow glue is the way to go. And you will see that this little eyelet cover has a right way and a wrong way. It should follow the curve of that front panel and it's got a straight edge on that edge there. So because we've got embossing, we want to use Tombow to glue that down. But before I do that... I'm going to use a Marina Mist marker pen to put my stitching in because I'm going to use Marina Mist as my little highlight colour for this boy's cut. So I'll quickly do this. Okay, so that's the um, eyelet cover now with its little stitching, faux stitching all done on it. So flip it over the back, a little bit of Tombow glue, 
onto the eyelet cover. Oh, and I'll put it in my hands. You've got a little bit of time to play with that Tombow glue to make sure that you get that running right along the edge there. Hmm, not sure. Maybe I should have used cream, but I've used white. I never usually use crumb cake and white together. We'll see. Could be disastrous. All right, I'll put that to the side to let that dry, and I'll zoom in to show you um, the rest of the stitching I'm about to do. So I'm going to put stitching on my toe piece, and I'm also going to run a bit of stitching along the shoe base here, which are both in white, which now, thinking about it, probably should have been cream. But anyway, I'll deal with it and we'll move on. <laughs> I'm not going to emboss the toe on um, <coughs> this boy's card. Excuse me, guys. Uh, you can if you want to, but let's go ahead and just put some stitching down. Okay guys, so you'll notice with the stitching on the um, shoe base piece, it only goes along the top and um, for the um, toe piece, you could easily have just stuck it along that one edge, but for this one I thought I'd go all the way around, but not sure I like that now, so maybe just um, on that front edge there. The pressure of doing this on the fly guys, I'm all a bit um, flustered now. Alright, let's see what happens. With this here now it's set um, and it's dry, you can just leave it um, without the eyelets in it. But at least need to put some holes in it with your crocodile um, for your laces to be threaded through. Now you can mark this with a pencil and be really particular. Hmm, yeah, not so good. Could have actually marked them with a pencil before I did it. Now you can leave them like that if you want to, guys. Or I do have a little mini collection of um, retired eyelets that from stamping up, and I know we can't get these anymore, but you can get other eyelets. Uh, or you can just leave them empty. You don't have to set eyelets into them, but I think it adds that little shoey look. I think shoey is a word. Okay, so I'm just going to set these. Okay, so that's your eyelets set in your front panel. Perfect. Now, <coughs> I'm also going to go on ahead on this one and put some stitching in in white, seeing I am teaming it with the white instead of cream. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit of um, faux stitching onto this um, front panel before I glue it down as well. Okay, so that's all the stitching you need on this one, guys. You don't need to go along this bottom edge here because your shoe base actually goes along that edge. And I would recommend putting a stitching on after your embossing. If you're going to do some embossing, you can leave the front panel plain. But I recommend putting it on afterwards because that way it's nice and bright and it sort of stands out. Okay, so um, the next thing to do, guys, is we've got to actually thread our um, ribbon through for our shoelaces. Now, the way I like to do this one um, is I just place that front panel on the front of the card there, and I will grab pens all I can find at the moment. A pen, and I'm going to roughly mark, I'll show you on this one here. You want the sort of... Um, eyelets to sort of zigzag up the card. I can't really sort of show you there but um, I'm going to just put some marks here where I think that the opposite shoelace would be. So I think sort of you know there, um, I don't know, there and there and that's basically based on where I've stuck those eyelets. So I'll take that away, get my crocodile back in and put some holes in here. Okay, so after some messing around, I've now got matching holes on this side, guys. So don't worry about eyelets on here because when you wrap your laces around, you'll actually um, cover those. So you won't need eyelets in that. You only really need if you're going to put them in eyelets in that front panel there. Okay, let's try and put this little guy together now. <coughs> so as I mentioned, excuse me with my coughing, front panel. Now when I stick glue on the front panel, I don't stick it... Um, much past here because I like to leave this a bit free so that I can thread the ribbon through and I'll show you what I mean. So I just sort of glue to about there and remember when I showed you how the front panel looked on here we didn't have um, coverage right to edge because some of that sort of hang hung over so I just put a little bit of glue on that side to make sure that the edge is going to stick down but you don't want it on the bit that's going to overhang. So turning over 
time to put the front panel on. Best way to do it guys is to sort of lay it on there. Move it into place so that your bottom, see what I mean about having to having time to be able to move it around guys because you've actually got to make sure that it matches so that your edge continues around that there and you've got a nice edge on there and your bottom lines up here. Okay, so give that a push down and see what I mean. You've got a little bit of cardstock there and you don't want glue on that. Okay, done. All right, now finding my um, base piece needs to go on. So this base piece runs along there like so. And again, I find the Tombow glue is excellent. Oh, I'm actually liking it. So we'll see how we go. I might have convinced myself that the white's okay. Let's see. All right, so just a thin strip of Tombow glue on the back of that, guys. And then just placing that on the bottom of your card. Oops, and you want it so that the heel all matches up. Now, if you want to as well, while you do this, put your little toe section in place so that you know that's all going to match up and see that matches up lovely there. Oh, 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 love it. So glue that down. Now this one, if you want to, guys, you can just snail that straight on. You don't have to use Tombow. If you've embossed it, like I did with this card, I use Tombow, always Tombow when I'm when I'm sticking embossing down. Okay, and a bit of sticking there for that one. Oh, yeah, not too bad. That's looking all right. Okay, so really what I need to do is I need to now go ahead and thread my ribbon through. So for this card, I've chosen a bit of um, Marina Mist taffeta ribbon. And, <coughs> excuse me, coughing is awful. I don't know about how much I need about that. That sounds terrible. I really should have measured that. Get some ribbon, guys, and like you're going to tie up a shoelace. And I just tie it like I would normally tie a pair of shoes. Now you'll see why I didn't glue this front flap down, guys, because when you are threading your shoelaces, there is absolutely nothing worse than um, not being able to get your hands in there to do it. So I just basically thread it, open this right up so that you can work at it. And I'll show you how I thread it. Okay, oops. Sorry guys, this is going to be clumsy. Me trying to make sure I show you and not um, block the camera for you, but do it as quick as I can. Okay, so lace through like the bottom throw. So up from underneath and then out through the front layer of the card. So you'll see on the back there it comes through the front layer of the card. All right, so making our shoelaces as even as possible. Okay, so then I just take the underside, the, the back piece and bring that to the front and I go down through the front hole here. Sorry, I hope I'm not blocking it with my big fat fingers. So down through the front hole there like that, guys, so that piece has come from the back side of the card up down and through this bottom one here now goes um, up here and across this one to the back of the card and comes from underneath and you pull it up through that hole okay so we're going to come back up from the bottom you can stop and rewind and play that a few times if you need to see how I've done then I just keep going with that. Um, let's go over the top. Doesn't really matter. This one is going to go. Oh, now which way did I do that? I wanted to make sure for this top one. That's right. I come up from the bottom because I want out my ribbon to be tied on that um, top edge. Does that make sense? I want to want to make sure that my ribbons are coming up through the top so this one here continue underneath and pull it up through and this one again like you did this one go over to the back and come up through now this ribbon is a bit thinner than the, the um, gros grain that I used on my pink card but I think it still looks okay 
I probably though would have um, maybe put more holes in this had I thought about using this ribbon again. But anyway guys, all you're going to do now is tie a knot and tie a little bow. Like that. Okay, so that's not too bad. It's pretty cute. Alright, and then um, the last things you do guys are put your insert panels in here and basically they just stick straight in there like that so I just use snail to hold those guys down if you want to stamp the greeting on the inside go ahead and do that before you stick them in because if you're like me and stamp it a bit oopsie and you've already stuck it in you've got nowhere to go so I'm going to put both panels in because I do have both panels but you could easily just have one that's not a problem but sometimes it just allows a bit of extra space Try a bit of an essay if you're so inclined. Okay, so inside the card, outside of the card. And to finish this little guy off, it's not in the template. So this could all go pear-shaped again. I'm going to go with a little sort of logo-y button -y sort of thing. I wanted to make them look like, like little gym shoe-y things. I'm not sure how well I'm going to go. But I've got some Marina Mist ink. I've got the French foliage stamp set, which I love. And it's got this little, I don't know, logo-y logo looking thing there. It says Paris or something, such thing on it. I'm going to just get that stamp with some scrap white cardstock, which I'm floundering for. Here we go. Oops. And I'm going to stamp this down. In um, Marina Mistink. I've already got a one inch Marina Mist circle cut out, punched down as you can see. So I'm going to use my three quarter inch punch. Punch this little logo out. Glue A to B. Cute, I think so, maybe. And glue, because I've got a glue on to embossed. I always use Tombow glue. I don't know, about there. I've got a funky little boy's birthday card or a little um, christening card or whatever what you want to use it for. Okay, um, I don't know if I would ever make it up on the fly again, guys. That might be a lesson learned, but it's not too bad. Um, use your imagination. It's endless with these little shoes. You could do whatever you like um, to pretty them up. You could turn them into all sorts of things and using different colour combinations and everything. I hope you enjoy using the template and I would love to see your recreations of this card. It is so much fun. So if you do recreate it, make sure you um, let me know on my blog and I'd love to link to where you've done it. Okay, thanks guys. Enjoy.